Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for uh, the um, August 15th, 2023 hearing of the Fall River Historical Commission. Um, it is 6 p.m. Uh, the meeting is being recorded. It will be um, uh, posted on uh, Fall River Government TV as well as their YouTube page. Um, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that <coughs> such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Uh, may I get a roll call, please? Joyce Rodericks, present. Rick Mancini, present. Elizabeth DeBlock, present. Connie Soule, present. And Jason Bouchard Naraki, present. Um, we do have two open seats on the Historical Commission. I did send out um, a request uh, to City Council. One of the seats will be filled by City Council recommendation, the other one by the mayor um, uh, through his recommendation uh, for the city ordinance. Um, he did send over a candidate, um, Ashley Takuna, however, that has not yet been brought up with um, City Council yet. It's not, not on tonight's agenda. I did ask the reason for that, but I have not heard back from the mayor's office yet. Um, so we're still vacant two seats, or down two seats. Um, let's see. Um, the first uh, item on the agenda, we have the minutes from July 18th. Um, due to a technical issue, those were not sent around, so we will approve those at the next meeting. Um, we should table that for minutes. Okay, I'll yeah. make a motion that we table the minutes of the, the last set of minutes mm -hmm. for the next meeting. I'll second that motion. All right, I have a motion by Rick and a second by Connie to table the minutes from July 18th. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. No. Okay. All right, um, do we have any citizen input on any of the items on the agenda? Yes. If you wouldn't mind coming up to the table, and um, if you wouldn't mind um, introducing yourselves, your name and address, please. Certainly. Colin Dice, 560 Ray Street. Um, prepared a few remarks. Um, good afternoon, uh, members of the Historical Commission. I first want to start by uh, extending my appreciation to both the chair and the vice chair for their um, insightful comments at the planning board meeting, of course, as private citizens. But um, I do believe it was um, it was very insightful, and it was, I do appreciate the um, lesson, I believe. I received myself and uh, planning board received in um, historical commission, historical districts. Um, I'm here today and I'm actually just going to go off, off script here. Um, I'm here today to honor a good gentleman that I've come to learn in our community, Jean Baptiste LePage. Wasn't born here but lived much of his life here, served his, served his country honorably during um, a major time in our, in our world's history during World War I, um, sacrificed himself on the battlefield. And unfortunately, as we all know, his overpass, his dedication was um, taken down and there's no um, concrete plan to, um, to suffice that. So I was very happy to see, um, even though Third Street isn't going to be most likely isn't going to be a good option for that location. It was very good to see the Historical Commission's um, commitment to that matter and putting it on the agenda today. Um, I just sent in an email um, early this morning with some recommendations. I am really looking forward for the board because I really would like to support the Historical Commission. I believe this is in your purview to make a recommendation either if it's the six I have here or um, a recommendation of any of the members to go forward before the planning board, because I believe we need a plan. I, we, we heard the last planning board meeting. You know, I, I heard great talk. I didn't see any concrete plan. When we have someone who served this country, his memorial was knocked down, I want to see something set in stone. I don't want to see his um, memory be forgotten. So I believe it's important that we keep at this, so we get something set in stone. Um, I have um, six proposals myself that I looked over, um, and if possible, I'll, I'd like them to at least be added into the record if I can hand it to you after. Um, I'm just going to go through them all individually. 
And again, some of these may have a historical impact. Some of them I just thought would, for the scenery wise and the location. And of course you gotta take into, um, and I understand that's this is the job for the planning board, but it is on the agenda today and I would love, um, I believe we need to work as a, as a team because I definitely don't want to um, step on the toes of um, your board either and recommend something that would um, hurt the historical district or roll back progress that's been made. Um, first, we have um, South Main Street by City Hall right outside here. Um, and, I, and, I, and I have copies, so I will definitely um, send them to you right after the speech. Um, we have South Main Street right by City Hall between North Main Street and the lights, I believe that's Borden Street. Yeah, I believe it is Borden Street. Um, we have the flags. It's an overpass over the highway. Something we should consider. Another place, um, Shank Street, is where uh, Mr. LePage was um, born and raised. Not born, I apologize. He was raised on Jank Street, spent most of his life before going into, into battle. Again, um, it was. Th this is actually something that was um, proposed to me by members in the community who couldn't be here today. It's actually something I didn't consider myself. Um, we have Jank Street, where he was born. Another one that was uh, proposed to me in the community. We have an overpass. I don't believe it has been named. Excuse me. Could you just turn that photo on, so on the... No, the on the last one I had? Yeah, just so we could get a look at that. And whereabouts on Jenk Street? You want to name the street? Is that... What would, what would your proposal be? For this one, I would... I proposed um, Jenk Street, the entire street. To change the name of Jenk Street? I would. I, 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 I don't know the historic... And this is... Um, this I'm is looking for, for clarification, yeah. that's all. So... Yeah. Okay. No, of course, and I, and I can go more into detail. Um, I was just trying to, I, I know it's citizens input, so I know this was more on the agenda. I could have gone more into um, detail, but I mean, you do have Jank Street. Um, I don't know, I know it's the um, planning board's purview to do this, the research, and um, that's why we have six proposals here. We can believe um, if some are catch the eye of the board and I'd love um, an endorsement of maybe even multiple. I was talking to my um, my colleague here, Mr. Godreau. I mean, we can always, <laughs> and he, he was going to speak after. Oh, okay, perfect, okay. Thank you. Um, we could definitely, I'd love to see the board endorse more than one proposal, definitely, and I, I have copies as well, so um, if, I, if I may, just present them. Sure, um, so. we do, I, I do have you on the agenda um, as item, 11, and I'm sorry, item 10, if you, um, we can go through the whole list then, if that's, if that works for I you. I think that would be more appropriate. Okay, cool, great. But if I may, um, right now, and I'll pass the microphone Absolutely. off. and that way I'll, we can take a look at sure, it. Sure, definitely. Sure. Jeffrey Gudrow, 229 Palmer Street, Walver, Mass. 229 Palmer? Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm just here supporting with Colin's uh, ideas. Um, I wasn't here last week for my, but my input was in. But of course, I do support of having this gentleman being uh, named in, uh, into one of the areas. I do, we can, we're going to have more discussions on this later, but I think uh, his name on his neighborhood might be uh, good, in my opinion. But again, any any place that will honor his name again, uh, I think would be uh, good for the city and for the historic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizen input or anything? Oh. Um, so, on notice of intent to demolish, um, these are... Um, Notifications I was sent uh, by email from Kerry in the licensing department. Um, item number two is 229 Highland Avenue. Um, doesn't have a historic name. Um, it is listed on the Massachusetts Historical Commission's uh, database, uh, FL.1293. Um, it is part of the Highlands National Register District in the Fall River Multiple Resource Area. Um, and I 
only just received the contact for the applic uh, the applicant's contact, so they are they were not able to attend tonight. Um, so if we can alert Carrie that we were able to review this, um, mm -hmm. but they are proposing tearing the house down, uh, the lead to expand a parking lot at the adjacent um, Charlton Hospital. Uh, I'll make a motion that we table this matter to our next meeting. I'll second the motion. I'll second that motion. Connie, uh, Connie oh, uh, seconded all right. it. Yep. <laughs> Hold on one second. Okay. All right. So I have a motion by Rick and a second by Connie to table item number two. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. Um, item number three, uh, one Atlantic Boulevard. Um, I did indicate it is not on the Fall River Registry of Significant Structures. Um, this was uh, an outbuilding on the property. Um, item number four. 476 13th Street. Again, it's not on the city's registry. Um, and actually, that goes alongside with five uh, item number five, 580 Pleasant Street. That is part of the Taco complex um, that they're, I believe, expanding. Um, both stru structures are not on the city registry. Um, and then item number six, um, this is a partial demolition of the rear porch at 72 Belmont Street. Um, the Chauncey Sears House, which is listed on the Highlands National Register District, I believe, yes. So, yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. you want to mind just introducing yourselves and your yep. address, please? Aaron Tetrell, 1282 Highland Ave, all over the mess. Joseph Cipriano, 674 Highland Avenue. Uh, Mr. Tatro, I'm sorry, your address again is? Uh, 1282. 1282, thank you. You're here for 72 Belmonts. Yes, yes. yes. Um, so I, um, we had received a phone call from uh, a neighbor regarding um, demolition that was going on to the, I believe, the rear porch area. Yeah. Um, so um, any demolition notices that come through, um, even if it's a partial demolition of a structure or an outbuilding on the structure, if it's on the um, in any of the historic districts. Um, uh, has to be reviewed by us just if there's a waiver that's needed or um, any alternatives or things like that uh, because it is a National Register District um, and um, so that's what prompted <laughs> um, visit. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, uh, telling the board what you're planning on doing with the property and um, what the demolition was in, uh, is entailed. Uh, the right back porch was, was just, you know, the house is in rough shape, mm -hmm. so it had to be taken down to be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be built, built exactly the same as it was. Mm -hmm. The railings we can't match, so we're going to be doing um, wrought iron. Okay. And that's on the back porch? Back, front, we're going to make it all match. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, was there any, is there any other demolition that will be occurring on the property? Mm -hmm. uh, the back left porch that's falling apart, we have to redo that one also. Back porch, okay. So yeah, basically right just outside. I know there is also a garage there. We don't know yet what we're going to do there. We need a structural engineer to go in okay. to see what can we do with it. I mean, our goal is to keep everything original. Mm -hmm. uh, the house is going to get painted and everything's going to be the same exact colors. Mm -hmm. Even the little trim on the leaves up on top. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a couple of painters who said it's, it's going to be a lot of labor to love here. And I'm like, well, we got to just try to keep it as much as possible the way it looks. So, okay. um, the property because it's not in the protective local historic district, which is governed by um, Mass General Law Forty C. Um, that's the district behind the property on High Street and Rock Street. Um, those properties have design restrictions to the exterior, anything that's seen from a public way. Um, so, and we don't necessarily we don't look at paint color. <laughs> we can make recommendations, but we can't approve or deny an application based on paint color. Just putting that out there. Um, and then, in terms of the exterior of the house, there's no really no because it's national register. It's not the 40C. We don't have design restrictions per se. Um, However, the property is, because it is on the National Register, it is a very significant property to the Highlands. Um, just between the, between the original owner, Chauncey Sears, who was a noted uh, mason and co contractor, built a number of mills in a lot of buildings in the city. Um, and then architecturally, it's in the National Register, um, 
nomination papers for the district, it's regarded it's, as the it's best beautiful Queen inside. Anne. Yes, but it's it one of the to, best Queen Anne's in the city. But it needs to be loved. It mm -hmm. needs a lot of love. It's a very <laughs> significant house. Um, so the property is eligible for historic tax credits for redevelopment or rehabilitation um, if it's income producing. Um, I believe the property was a three family. Correct. It is. It is. It is, it is, it is a three family. Um, so if it's uh, income producing and is it eligible for CBC too, or yes, it is. Um, well, I could ask a couple of questions. Yes. Is is what are, what are the intents of the property? I guess would be the question. Is it going to be developed? Is it going to be apartments? Uh, business? It's what, going to stay the same as it is. Stay the way it is. As a three so family. As a three family. family. So there's two apartments on the third floor. Correct. Yes. And then the the owner owner had a beautiful first and second. second. Two floor. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to remain as is. Mm -hmm. Everything and, is as. And it's going to be rented or occupied, owner occupied. Or it'll, it'll, it'll be, be rented. rented. It'll be rented out. Okay, so it, that would be eligible for CPC monies to restore the exterior of the building. Okay, so, so CPC is the Community Preservation Committee. Um, so any uh, is it one one and a half percent of the property taxes collected in the city? I think it goes Correct. towards plus a plus a stipend plus from a stipend the, from the from state. The state. Um, it goes towards a preservation grant fund that the city maintains, um, and it goes towards any historic property, any restoration work. Um, so, for example, on the outside of the house, if uh, if there are windows that cannot be replaced, for example, um, you know, tax credits or grant funding can be used to replace. His, with something that's historically appropriate, not necessarily, for example, like vinyl is not, but like a composite window or vinyl clad or something like that, or um, aluminum clad, um, and things like um, you know uh, ex restructuring of a porch if it's rotted or falling apart, uh, stone repointing, you know, the list goes on. The, um, the so rail, the, the Roth iron rail, is going to pretty much squelch a lot of. The abilities to get funding on the historic significance of the house because the Roth iron is just going to take away, particularly that rounded, curved front porch. No, we're going to keep it rounded. Yeah. Right, but so if we, if we went back to wood, you're saying that there's funds available mm -hmm. to just redo it all in wood? Yeah. Correct. There's funds available to maintain the character of what of the, you're right, right, right. the existing home. I got you. And putting in the Roth iron. We'll eliminate that, that those funds. Pretty much squelch, you know, squelch the the, the, uh, the idea. Where, where could we learn more information about mm. this? Uh, it's in there. the guidelines. It's in the guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, um, so we have our preservation. I'm sorry, our design guidelines um, that we published uh, just a few months ago. Um, it's on our website, um, which is through uh, FallRiverMA.org. Yeah. Um, it's the historical commission. There's another page saying historic district, but that's not functional right now. Um, but at the very bottom of the Historical Commission's website, there's a link for the design guidelines. Okay. And there's information as to who to contact and so forth regarding the oh. community preservation okay. grant funding. Um, so that, um, you know, it's a fantastic program and has done a great deal of work with uh, a lot of the historic assets that we have here in the city. Um, do you have extra copies of it too? Of the design guidelines? Yeah. We do. Um, so we do have extra copies. Um, if you see, um, if you go to the licensing department up on the fifth floor, I think it's the fifth floor, they do have copies of the guideline, printed copies It's there. a great book with pictures, mm -hmm. I have my great <laughs> explanation. Yeah. Yeah. So this, actually, we and were it, able to get this produced from CPC funding as well, because yeah. this was, um, okay. yeah. It's, you said licensing, right? Licensing, licensing yep. Okay. Um, if you see Carrie in the department, yeah. she has, oh, yeah. she has a box of them. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And the age of the home, uh, the style of the home, the wrought iron just doesn't go with that home. So if you if you read it, it's not to insult you because no, I, no. I understand iron work is very detailed mm -hmm. and quality and whatnot. But for this particular home, it it's going to take away the quality of the home, even though you, you don't see it that way. Once you read the guidelines. Once you look at other homes that are similar, you'll understand why we say what we're saying. And uh, it would be complimentary to the home to keep it wood. Um, a great example of uh, a home that's being uh, rebuilt pretty much from ashes is the house on that burned down on um, High, High Street. High Street, High Street. Yeah. 528 yes. High Street. And um, 
they've been working very hard at keeping the home um, uh, as exact as possible and true to the year and the design of the actual home. So. Um, yeah, and that one, um, that particular house. Um, I mean, they they did windows. They did windows. They even uh, sourced a stained glass window to fit in that very mm -hmm. specific spot. Um, and yeah. And they noticed when they were when they were taking some of the siding down and tearing down the interior of the home that there were windows on the side that were replaced by a couple of higher short. <laughs> and what they did is they removed okay, that and went and back to the original intent. So they're That's bringing right. the home back, actually more original than more original than the, what the fire original. was. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And considering the Sears house is pretty intact, uh, I mean it's yeah. the the previous zone. I believe um, you just recently purchased the property, I believe. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I I think you're the third owner on the property, which is pretty fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. You don't see yeah. that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I mean it's it's a it's one an amazing, the, beautiful mm -hmm. home. Yes. It's very significant to the city. Mm -hmm. And once that home is painted and the exterior is done, yeah. it's wow. Yeah. Right. You know, um, um, yeah. Next door at the Art Association, they are doing work uh, on the exterior using CPC funding. Um, I believe they're rebuilding part of the front porch. And are they exterior. Exterior. They're gonna, And they're going to remove the, the uh, fire. Too. Well, the fire the fire, fire, fire station in front of the yeah. building that's going to get rerouted and, and, and placed in another location, which is not so intrusive. Uh, they're going to be uh, scraping and painting and, and doing a lot of repairs. The porch is going to be rebuilt. A lot of a lot of work that they're going to be doing, and that again is CPC funding that they received. Uh, that turret they, is just amazing yeah mm. oh and with it's, the copper dome that, that's unique. yeah you don't yeah. see yeah. that very often yeah and, and that railing by the way there was a comp composite are okay uh, yeah i was, I was gonna ask you yeah because mm -hmm. we've done some quotes on on the composite over mm -hmm. the wood which Good. is there are manufacturers out there that will actually bend the composite to match the existing mm -hmm. and and give you the spindles uh, almost identical the ballasts can be almost identical to what you got and, and, and please stick to the um, historical height. height. Mm -hmm. You're in a historic That's district, so, so right. you, you're, you are, you we are get allowed we to build it. No, actually, yeah. uh, I, I, we were in a way. We, yeah. we do a lot in the city, but mm -hmm. we do everything by code. Yeah. And then when I had this conversation with Jason, I learned that you know the historical buildings don't have to go by today's code right. as long as you stick to the originals. So, mm -hmm. okay. so it's it's yeah. something that we're... So the code we're, is a little higher. Yeah, like, almost yeah, like yeah. They, I believe is the code, but... Your railings are probably at this point 30 or 32. Right. right. Yeah. And, yeah. and they can remain at that height. Exactly. Height. And what you do is you get across the street and look at the rail, and it should match the, the sill of the sill. window. Oh, mm -hmm. that's a good gauge. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, the Victorian, yeah, typically, if there's some um, outliers, like if it's a Greek revival or something, those windows are a little lower, but that's yeah, different. That's true. Um, but with the Queen Inn, yeah, they should line right up with the silk. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not we're trying to design your property. No, no, no. no. That's, that's <laughs> well, no, it's, it's yeah. just information, and yeah. the more yeah. we know, I think the better it is. And yeah. So regarding, um, so I can send um, uh, a letter to, was it? Frank. Frank. Yes. Um, I can send a letter over to Frank, just letting him know that you did come before. So any type of demolition work on the exterior, um, just needs to be brought up with us, so okay. at least we'll, no. um, we'll probably be back because that. All right. O otherwise, there's a six-month delay, and you don't want that. that. No. that we no. don't want that to barn is that. barely yeah. standing. Oh, don't tell me. Yeah. You should yeah. see. You're breaking so, my heart. Now, you, third, now you, can, you can walk into the property because before it was just all yeah. wooded. It's night and day though it's, when the shrubbery came down. Yeah, right there. and so, the house, yeah. the house itself actually popped out. Uh, yes, yeah, it, it did. Just popped. And we got rid of the above ground pool that was mm -hmm. there. Mosquito yeah. yeah. heaven. And what's going to happen to the lot? It's a big lot. We haven't decided. Yeah. We haven't got that point We're yet. still so busy on this side. We have this now. The next big thing is going to be a barn. We got projects. Yeah, all and we got right. we got Throughout projects all over the city. <laughs> between. You could rehab the barn and rent it. That too. Oh yeah, a tax there has for that. been another, um, like right down the street, a bond that was rehabbed. Mm -hmm. On uh, two actually, one on Rock, Lincoln. so one on Rock, yep, and the other one on is it Lincoln? Lincoln or Pierce? I think. It's oh Lincoln. wait, yeah, I remember seeing one of those. So, I yeah, think it's on Rock oh. High Street. It's I'm, stunning. It really it's, is. If it's not zoned of like a, a living quarter, because it's historic, you're able to do that. You'd get permission if you're going to keep it. Yeah. 
in a historical form. Right, and so what would happen is that if you were going to take that bond and put it back to its original decor and make an apartment in there, but you were going to develop the outside back to what it was, Look, right, was right. and get that look again with the beautiful home and, and, and the bond, then you could approach us and if it was a good design and it blended well, we would give you a letter of support. So when you went to the planning board or the zoning board, so, yeah. you would be able to present a letter of support from the historic committee that you know that falls in, into a place and it and it would by all means if that would be restored that would be rather interesting to put that back in, in you know and it's it existing big. It's, 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 it's big it but it's it's, yeah. it's scary to be inside you don't know if it's going to fall <laughs> <laughs> and, and so and there are it's uh, literally leaning like there are tax credits, uh, historic tax credits through the state and federal that um, on the state and federal level that are for rehabilitation and that would qualify. And many of the Fall River contractors do use mm -hmm. it. They come before us, they get a letter of support mm -hmm. from us, and, and they. Well, so never, you will, this is your our first, first historical home that Yeah, I think it might be. Yeah. You bought something on Pierce Street too, did you not? We did. Yeah. Yes. That's I don't think historic. No, uh, no it's on the hill. Yeah. It's on it looks like it's built down. Oh, okay. Three um, family. It might be a significant structure, though. It could be on the list. So the Highlands Historical, the National Register District, is quite big. Um, so depending on where it appears, because it does extend north. It goes on uh, up to Highland, and I think it goes up to North Park, and there's Highland and Stanley, I think. Um, so houses on that part of Highland are on the National Register, um, and then whatever's on President Avenue, remember the boundaries, going down President Avenue, those are not, but everything behind that's in it the is, lower, That's yeah. in the that's lower, in the lower. So there's a lot. And, that, and it could be on the significant structures list. Okay. There's a lot of property out there. And the list is on our website as well. Uh, so it goes by address. Um, it's, um, Sometimes a good yeah. clue is if it has granite foundation, you're probably dealing with a historical. Yeah. Okay. We get quite a few in the Highlands, mm -hmm. so we can check it out. Sure. Yeah, um, the and you know, we've worked with uh, developers for um, uh, using the historic tax credit program. Mm -hmm. um, usually, they go with a preservation consultant or so, and there are uh, firms locally that work specifically with that. Um, so they do basically all the legwork of um, doing all the research on the property, um, coming before us for the application. In fact, we have a few on our agenda. Um, so um, you know, they come before us for. The tax credit prop, uh, process, and they, you know, they can tell you exactly what entail what that entails. Um, I believe it's a twenty percent um, credit towards any um, qualifying expenses on um, any rehabilitation or restoration of the property. Um, so, I mean, there's good things of being you know, in a historic district. So, um, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, I said, just to the side, we'd like to add that expand our 40C district up in that area, which will probably be in your, uh, put that home in there, so, but, but you would have to voluntarily sign for that. Right. I agree. Yeah. But the point is that we'd like to do that in that area, because there's some beautiful homes, and what it does is it, it raises the value of the home, and it keeps the historic district as right. a historic it's bigger. district, it elevates right. everything. Right, right. It prevents in, any insensitive development from occurring in the neighborhood um, if a house were to come down for an office building or something like that, for example. Um, so like it, the hospital coming right across the yes. street from you. Right. <laughs> so there's that little house that's next door to the hospital that, yeah. that you know, they want for parking. They want for mm -hmm. parking. I mean, you know, it's too, and the house is sure small enough. Sure, their plan is to keep on buying it. Yeah. 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 I mean, and the house is small enough, it could be moved somewhere. <laughs> um, but anyway, so. Well, I know. You, you, not, just an aside. <laughs> You have a very large lot there, uh -huh. and <laughs> Do you want a third house? <laughs> 229, if that is m my fear of looking at the Chansey home and that beautiful lot, is that a little so? Yeah, no. Yeah. That wouldn't happen. <laughs> but it's such a large lot, uh, if someone was to purchase a home, one of these historic homes that are up in that area, and move it. Put it there. You might have, you know, it might be a double uh, win. Yeah, for the neighborhood. There has been, and there, there is history of infill. Um, when the when the hospital expanded in the early '80s, um, 
they did a big push with the parking garage with parking lots office buildings and uh, especially on the uh, eastern side of the hospital along Hanover Street there were a number of houses that were moved Prospect Street too that were moved elsewhere around the neighborhood um, on vacant lots within the Highlands just because they were historic architecturally or culturally and um, you know they were saved it would have to be a beautiful house moved over here I'm not that little no, brown no, one no 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 but I'm just I'm, you know you're right yeah I'm just yeah. Uh, thinking out loud so could I just before I I don't want yeah. to lose track of this if you the CPC has a, a deadline coming up it's September so okay. if you're interested in, in looking for funds from the CPC and there's, there's, you get a lot of requests, so not everybody gets the money, and some sometimes we, we end up cutting the money into small portions. But uh, you, you have to apply in September. Okay. Uh, what I would do is again get on the website, the Florida website, and you want the CPA, CPC, CPC, and it will give you uh, Nancy, um, a Sandy uh, number will be on there. There'll be a number to reach. And, and then you could get all the paperwork necessary and come up for review, all right? But you have to start the process September. Um, or tomorrow. Or tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow. Be even better. Um, Not tonight. So regarding their request uh, for, this would be a waiver, basic, or, not waiver, well, yeah. Um, so they've already, you've already removed the, the, yes. the backboard. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, is there any other demo that's occurring or will be, will be occurring? Just to just, just yeah, just, yeah, that just port, fix the, the, porch. the porch, bring it back up to the same, and okay. and now that we now we might go with yeah, okay. well, well composite, 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 and composite. probably composite. Yeah. Composite will last just as long as you roll off iron. Yeah. Yep, exactly. It won't rot. You're right. Um, okay, so I do we need a vote for? Yes, I just yes. had to contact or out to send a motion. Right. Yeah. All right. You want me? To, I'll make a motion that we uh, remove the waiver for the demolition. And allow the project to proceed as as shown this evening. Yes. Or as discussed this evening. And if there's any um, additional demos, you'll just have to come before us for that. Now we know. Okay. Not a problem. And as a gentle reminder again, we we will if you have an emergency that comes up, we're not opposed. Jason is not opposed to calling a special meeting. Mm -hmm. and okay. We've done that in the past where people have had emergencies. We'll call a special meeting and take care of the emergency. We're here. You know, we want to help. That's what we're here for. We, we don't want to be an obstructionist. We want to be an Thank activist you. in helping you preserve your property. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we have a motion by Rick uh, for a waiver of the six-month demo delay provided uh, with no additional demos occurring. As, as per the discussion. Per the discussion. The yeah. discussion. Mm -hmm. All right, do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Right, so I have a motion by Rick and a second by Connie um, to remove the waiver for our discussion. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 In favor? Or in favor? <laughs> Aye. <laughs> uh, any opposed? Okay. All right. So now right over to you. Okay, and, great. And I'll Thank you. That with Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bye, everybody. Um, all right, so item number seven under correspondence, I received um, notification from the State Historical Commission. Um, this is regarding the eligibility of the Ashworth Brothers Mill. We have reviewed this in the past for tax credits. So um, this is from um, Joy Beasley, the keeper of the National Register of Historic Places uh, in Washington, D.C. Um, this was sent to um, I'm sorry, this was sent to Ms. Beasley from Ben Haley, who's in charge of the uh, National Register program with Massachusetts Historical Commission. Um, uh, please uh, find the following nomination form for the Ashworth, Ashworth Brothers Mill, Fall River, Massachusetts. Uh, the nomination has been voted eligible by the State Review Board and has been signed by the State Historic Preservation Officer. The owners of the property were notified of pending State Review Board consideration 30 to 75 days before the meeting and were afforded the opportunity to comment. Um, so this is then the process of uh, listing the structure on the National Register. Um, so there's that. Um, we do have um, a number of items, uh, 8A through 8D. Um, these are continued letters of support from the Historical Commission for Ryan LLC regarding tax credit applications. Um, unfortunately, they were not able to attend tonight. 
Um, this is for the uh, 8A is the ILGWU building at 38 to 48 Third Street, Sanford Spinning Mills at 206 Globe Mills Avenue, uh, the Notre Dame Rectory at 529 Eastern Avenue, and Union Belt Company at 66 Troy Street. Um, so we will need to table. When do they need these letters? Is it October? Uh, no, they need them. Um, Thirty-first. So Ooh. we will need to get a special meeting um, before then. Um, we do have that site tour coming up. Oh. We're trying to figure out a date at this point. Okay. Um, so it would likely have to be a virtual since they're coming in from uh, Ryan is over Providence. But um, yeah. So okay. We can do a virtual. So we need a motion. I'll make a motion that we table this for our next meeting and or a special meeting. Okay. I'll second that motion. Connie. All right, so I have a motion by Rick, uh, second by Connie, uh, to table items 8A through 8D uh, for either our next meeting or a special virtual meeting or a special meeting. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Joyce? Oh, I'm sorry. Is that a yes? Okay. Uh, any opposed? No. Okay. All right, so. Um, Item nine, we have a request for a letter of support for CPC funding from, uh, it is Christ the Rock Church. My agenda says Chris the Rock Church. Yeah. <laughs> that is a typo. Um, and we do have uh, Rob, uh, is it Caravan? Caravan, okay. Caravan. If you wouldn't mind just uh, introducing yourself and your address, please. Certainly, uh, Robert Canavan, 309 Madison Street, here in beautiful Fall River. So you're here regarding a, a CPC application for um, the church? Correct, yes. Right. Uh, if you want to mind just explaining the project at hand and... Absolutely, okay. to the best that I can. <laughs> uh, thank you to Jason uh, and uh, Jim Soul too. I don't know if there's a relation. There is. <laughs> um, been uh, tremendously helpful in this process. I took over at the church this past fall after being there five years, and there's a lot of repairs that need to be done, so I reached out to... Um, I think it was Jim first, and then Jim sent me to Jason, and somebody, I think maybe you, sent me all these articles about the church and <laughs> how we are, we're 100 years old and we're on the historic register already, but as the Presbyterian Church, but you, I think it was you said it, the address is what matters, not the name. So the tower in the back, um, I had sent uh, some pictures in, I don't know if you can see them this way, but the yellow highlighted area is um, deteriorating where the water's starting to come in. Uh, in every single direction. So it comes straight down all the way to the lower floor. So over the years, they've tried to just patch it on the inside with Portuguese ingenuity, and uh, it always hasn't uh, paid off well. So uh, we're looking to, uh, the previous pastor was gonna sell the building, and uh, so many people came in and wanted to turn it into a dance hall, or somebody was actually going to buy it to make it their own residence. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, but everything fell through, and when I took over as pastor, I really felt like we needed to keep it a church. Uh, I love the area, and all the investment we've done on the inside, we've seen the money come in. So um, as a Christian, we're saying we're trusting God, but we're also trusting on CPA fundings and stuff like that as well. So our hope is um, we, uh, Civtech, uh, is that Mike and Ann, I believe? Mm -hmm. Uh, they came and sat with me. Mike was actually baptized at that church in the 70s. Oh. So I took him through the building again, and it was a walk down memory lane for him. So they're going to help me get an engineer out, structural engineer, to see the scope of what we need to do. I know the street, uh, the church down the street cost well over a million or $2 million to do their tower. So even if we have to take it in, in small little segments and sections, we're here for the long haul. So, uh, And we're going to put skin in the game, too. We have some money set aside, not a lot. But it might even just cover Civtex uh, fees. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to um, do that. And when I asked him today about uh, a dollar amount, he said if they push you for a dollar amount, <laughs> say $500,000, um, I think that would make a dent in it, obviously. But we won't know until we get an engineer. Sure. And I mm -hmm. think the deadline is September 1st for my eligibility application. Mm -hmm. So I have everything filled out except the dollar amount. So. I'm hoping if I get a letter from support from you, I have one for the mayor's office, um, just trying to do everything we can to make this move forward. Well, I, for one, applaud you for taking this on and doing this. Thank it's you, I appreciate beautiful. that. It's beautiful. 
It is a beautiful building, mm -hmm. actually. It's, it's uh, and it's no small fee. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, churches, no. especially when they uh, they're so complex in their design and yeah. Um, and this particular one, I I remember researching the architect. I was pretty. I can now. I can't remember it. Um, isn't that terrible? Um, but it was a. I believe it was a. Boston architect, I think that Providence. Did. Providence. Yeah. Um, uh. Oh yes. Okay. Um, it's slowly coming back, but um, it, it was. <laughs> it's. They've done a few, a number of uh, different church buildings in and around. Yeah, Columbia Street. I know we did that church as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which is beautiful too. It's a fantastic so yeah. church. So they, it, it's, it's, it's neat to see, especially when you know Fall River in, you know, the 1890s through the 1920s had uh, because of the railroad. Really, um, you had the access accessibility from all this talent architects from Boston, from New York. Um, we have, you know, Fall River is fortunate. We have a McKinney and White building downtown. Like it's, you know, that's fascinating. And, and you know, this is, it's a fantastic building. Um, and uh, it's a contributing factor to the Highlands District. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so. I make a motion um, to give a letter of support. Uh, I'll second the motion. <laughs> and I have a motion by Connie. And a second by Elizabeth for a letter of support for CPC, uh, for their CPC application. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? All right. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank I'll send so that over much. to you. Um, the yes. meeting is the 21st next Monday. Monday. I will be very busy this week of getting letters out. So. Okay, <laughs> yes. Your so. meeting, your CPC meeting is mo next Monday. Okay. Uh, yeah, but you, you can call Sandy and call okay. out, but all right. I was just, Forming, Jason. No, so I appreciate the letter that. Out to you in time. This has been a huge learning application, uh, a process, and even sitting back there and listening to you guys, learning a lot tonight. So I appreciate that. Jason is an extremely busy man on mm -hmm. this committee, mm -hmm. and anyway, as I, busy as he is, he emailed me back every time the last three days. <laughs> I, I, and I, I do encourage uh, the fire being lit under under me to get the things done. So um, you'll have the letter before your meeting. All right, I appreciate that. And you'll Thank see you. Jim there too. All right, on perfect. Monday. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Um, so, item number 10, um, renaming of, so uh, this is the renaming of 3rd Street to the uh, John uh, Jean Baptiste LePage Street. So the initial request was made uh, to City Council from the applicant Colin Dias. It was referred to the Planning Board. Um, the, uh, the Planning Board tabled the matter on August 9th, 2023, uh, seeking more information. Um, and we have Mr. Dias back, yes. Thank yeah. you, and um, just to re reiterate, um, I think it was, speaking of learning opportunities, it was um, it's important that um, you both came before that meeting. We don't want to tear up any um, historical districts, so I believe it's important that we all work in collaboration, not just me mm -hmm. and this board, but the historical commission. This is the renaming for a war veteran who had his dedication torn down, I believe the historical commission is in its right place to make um, to help make a recommendation. And um, and just reiterating what I went through before. Oh, right here. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> you didn't get to see them. <laughs> I tried to um, pull. Um, obviously, I didn't get through the entire city, but I did try and pull a few um, members of the community. Okay. see um, where their stances were. And a lot of individuals in this community support a rededication, and they also support a monument. They support a rededication with um, something that would... Um, something significant. Really, something yeah. very significant. Very, something very significant, and the quote that Harold knew, something grand, I think that would mm -hmm. be important. So I just wanted to go through a few. Um, someone mentioned Bicentennial Park, and when this was brought to my attention, um, it was not too long ago where we had a school named after an individual. Um, the RPA is now named the Robert L. Medeiros Resiliency Preparatory Academy. And Bicentennial Park, um, I'm not sure if it's a state property or city property. State. It is state, it's okay, state. so that's a different animal, but again, it's something, you know, I'm, I support, I'm big into symbolism you know, we have an individual whose um, dedication was knocked down. I say we go ten times as hard and make something even more grand for him. I think that's that would be great for our city to respond in such a way. Um, and some of these may be ambitious. Some of these were brought. Um, this was actually proposed by a veteran here. I'll start with this. Um, we brought Broadway, the overpass, um, 
if you're going down 138, you're finally reaching. It's the first overpass up there. Um, don't believe it's named. Um, I believe that would be a first start right here. We went over Jank Street, yeah. where he was um, born and raised. Um, my my concern is you're going to have a lot of residents have to change their name. That's why I proposed Third Street uh, to begin with, because I wanted a, a location where it wasn't going to be a lot of turmoil for um, individuals who lived on that street if there is a re renaming of um, an area where there's property. Another location right out here, right over the overpass, you have the flags, you have the bridge, beautiful location. You have South Main Street right where it reaches from, again, North Main to Borden. So that would be a great location. I think that one has a name. Does that have a name? The plaza has a name across the street. What's the plaza's name? Is uh, it a person? I want, is it Gromada? As, I think it's some. There's a plow. No, no, I'm so No, I, I'm just concerned that that already has been named, but I'm not 100% sure. 100% sure. Um, and the historic district that runs through, well, it does not encompass that part of South Maine. The Fall River, down, I'm sorry, downtown Fall River is just beyond that at Bedford and North Maine. I was referring um, to the street yeah. itself. Right, just mm -hmm. seeing what's in the area. But um, South Main Street in front of City Hall, oh, I think it's just the plaza across with all the flags that mm -hmm. has a plaza that has a name already. I oh, okay. Gorm I think it's Gormada. Okay. Anyways, so sorry. sorry. No, no, no problem. Another, and again, you, I I think it's important that um, we keep in mind that residents would have to change the street names, and that's something that really. I'm just speaking as one citizen, no one really wants to see happen. Um, we have Duval Street, we have Route 79, doing a lot of construction down there to redoing the entire, um, redoing the, the entire highway. So I mean, I great, I think a great way for this community to respond is to redo. You knock down the Route 79 overpass, you respond again. You have Duval Street. This is technically Duval Street. You have Duval Street northbound. You have Duval Street southbound. This is actually brought to me um, by a city council which was actually talking about Duval Street as well. Um, so we have Duval Street right here. Let's rename it Jean Baptiste LePage Street. Um, we have 130, it'd be similar to 138. This might be state property, so I know it's a different um, different ball game to get that renewed. But um, I guess it would be a question. But again, this is all, the questions I'm answering for myself here is a question for the planning board. I'm really here today. To see, to see, hear ideas from this board, see if we can get maybe a letter of support for one of these proposals or a proposal of your own doing so we, I, so we go back before the planning board at their next meeting and actually get a plan in place for this individual. I think it's very important that we do that. And it should be a collaboration between the LePage family, yourself, I agree. the spearhead, and, and our team here, and, and the remainder of the city, the planning board also. But the uh, Corporal LePage was uh, born, and or not born, but raised in the Flint neighborhood. And the Eastern Avenue, uh, the southern part of Eastern Avenue, the, the lower end, there were a lot of green greens out there. And uh, I, th that is owned by the Park Board, it's city land. Mm -hmm. In the middle of Eastern Avenue, all those greens are controlled and run. They're owned by the city, and they're controlled by the Park Board. So the park board is always anxious to do something nice, and particularly when you could get the family to maintain the property or maintain an island. It, that would also give you, and I heard you mention that a monument would be in order. Well, that if you were to get, if the park board was to allocate one of those one of those land sections to you, and again, I'm not speaking for the park board. You would have to go before the park board. Uh, and if, if they determined that yes, it would be in order, then uh, you could also start to maybe go before the CPC or, or go to a veterans organization to see if you could get some funding to get a monument. Then you would have an island mm -hmm. with a nice monument on there. And you could do all kinds of nice things with it, flags. I mean, it, it, it's endless as to what you can do there and expand. 
And it also gives you a place where you can go uh, with a family and you can recognize them on, you know, certain holidays or yes. uh, s significant dates specific to him. And, and he's very historic in that he is a corporal, but he was the first Fall River resident to die or get killed in combat in the world in World War One. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of value mm -hmm. to that historic. Oh, to even have a bronze plaque with the story written on it yeah. in place where it wouldn't just be his name. Um, everyone could read what his story was, including kids as you're getting older, you know, people get forgotten and they could they could read all about him. Um, that is a good idea. So, what, what, what my suggestion is that uh, we take a look at that and, and a phone call, it could, I, I wouldn't mind making a phone call to Nancy at the park board and uh, determine if there's any of those islands that are available, that might be available if the board so chooses. And uh, again, we want to be part of that for you. We want to be, again, we want to be in assistance. So uh, I would do that and find out, get back to you, and, and then we could further take, you know, move this along. This is not something that's going to happen in a month or two. This is something that's going to take a, you know, a few months to, to resolve, get a location, and then you know, determine where and how. And the fact that it was, it was tabled by planning state, is, at least then it's staying in planning. Um, so they can keep on tabling it while we, a group can assemble to figure out a more appropriate monument for him. Yeah. Um, what what I, do you think of, of utilizing one of those islands out there? I, I think that's a great there. idea. I spoke to the um, individual who actually wrote the um, ordinance that I went through to go before the planning board. Um, he's actually used to be the former veterans agent of the city. So I had a in-depth conversation. It was actually, um, he gave the idea of, this is actually something he proposed. Um, but I do like that idea as well. Um, of a, a certain section, we could put a monument there. I think that would be, um, I think that would be a great gesture right there. Um, I believe that wouldn't even, in under, I'm not an attorney yet, but this is um, reading the language. I don't even think that would go before the park board. I believe that would still go before the planning board. I don't want to step on their toes, but um, no, I mean, it's, it's park board. Yeah, park, the park greens board. are. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Just a question: yeah. Have you looked at the Flint area? Since LePage is from the Flint area, I did look would, at um, would the uh, dividers on Eastern Avenue offer an opportunity to locate a memorial on those dividers? That's what we're talking yeah. about, Joyce, Rick actually. Just that up. Yeah. yeah, that's what we're referring to. You call them dividers, but we call them greens. Greens or medium. Or yeah. Island. Yeah. yeah, so that's actually what we're talking about. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's several of them as you go down mm -hmm. the avenue. And they're most recently from the World War II era, uh, not from World War I, but um, they've been used, uh, the, those dividers have been used successfully. And again, uh, we'll, we'll check on it for you, but that's, yeah. uh, that's park board uh, real estate, mm -hmm. yes, real estate. So the planning board absolutely would be involved in this, but then we have to get the authorization from the park, park board. board. Yes. And I think historically the, the median that goes down Eastern Avenue was um, a project that was consulted uh, between Olmsted Brothers and the city of Fall River mm -hmm. back, what, years and years ago, 100 years ago or so. Um, so I mean, yeah. So the park. So, so there's a tremendous amount of history. Yes, just plenty mm -hmm. of history. But having Olmsted involved in it. I'm definitely after this meeting. Um, when I leave, I'm going to go by Eastern Avenue and look at some locations, and um, I'm going to write it down right now. I'll reach out to Nancy. Yeah. Um, another idea, I but that I was thinking of regarding so, so the Flint neighborhood. It's not in the, and this is more of a, a bigger picture item that you know. I'm sure the city may be addressing, hopefully will be addressing soon, regarding revital, revital, revitalizing the Flint neighborhood, uh, because it's that whole district, the whole neighborhood's not on the National Register, but at the end of, the, of Pleasant Street and Eastern Avenue, that whole square, there's also the possibility of naming that mm -hmm. intersection as you know, the Jean-Baptiste Jean LePage Memorial Square, um, and that, you know, that has been done in numerous cities. Uh, 
I, we yeah. have that done here as well. If it's not already named for, I don't think it is, but if it's not already named mm -hmm. uh, for someone, um, it is a very prominent location. That's what was discussed at the planning board meeting mm -hmm. last time. Yep. So um, mm -hmm. you know, we can do a, uh, name a square as well, um, like that little intersection. I could. I, I, and I know the um, president of the Flint Neighborhood mm -hmm. Association. Like, mm -hmm. I know he just went on vacation, but um, <laughs> when he gets back, I, I work with him. So cool. definitely that's a conversation right there. But I do like the um, the greens. I do know um, that would be a great place to put a statue or mm -hmm. a dedication mm -hmm. there. Sure. It, it, it's the growth is, is uh, the, the growth of that would be entirely up to you. You just mm -hmm. keep expanding over the years, if you like, with that memorial. Mm -hmm. you know. I'm on board with that idea. Um, I would just ask the board if they can table this discussion to the next meeting so we can come back with specifically um, okay. maybe the Flint neighborhood of after I see. Maybe it can be brought up at their meeting, but definitely um, definitely Eastern Avenue, I think. Um, and I'd love to hear um, I, if we can reach out to what you said, Mr. LePage's, um, um, I believe, great okay. nephew who was at the planning board meeting. Yes, if we uh, could send David, him. I think his name was. I don't know if we have his information. I do. He was not able to attend tonight. Um, he said Tuesday was not a good day for him. So if we do another hearing, we'll just have to f uh, figure out a day that works for everyone involved. And um, yeah, I love. I would love to really hear from him as well. Yeah, absolutely, because mm -hmm. um, I think he had he has quite a bit of information on on uh, uh, his ancestor. He does. Um, so which that's. And I'll yeah. make a motion to table this discussion. Okay. <laughs> And carry it into our next meeting sure. to allow us to just research more in depth. Yeah, that, that, that would be great. And then I, I do have one more question. Um, one, I admire that you're you're you know taking this on, you're spearheading it, and um, making sure it just doesn't end with the collapse of the overpass. Um, what was your interest? Like, how did you find out about it? What was your interest? I don't know the history. I, I, I heard about this first in the Herald News. Um, oh. And it just, as one citizen, I was just angered. And I'll, I'll say angered to see that we tore down um, With no an plan. overpass without without a plan in I place see. for a World War One veteran. And when I did my I research on the mm -hmm. individual and see the sacrifices, his, upbring, up, his French upbringing, and just... Um, Every, all that coming mm -hmm. together, I, I guess the ambition in me took over. <laughs> I admire that. Um, Thank you. I'm going to jump in real quick, too. At the planning board meeting, um, the one of the planning board members, Michael Farias, I might be mispronouncing the name Farias, um, he, um, he's a landscape architect, and he did mention that the, um, the state and the land is currently owned by the state. There's going to be a lot of bouncing around before it goes back to the city. Um, but ultimately, the city has allocated a space for a memorial for um, Mr. LePage and another uh, individual. Another Mr. Jokum. I know his last name was Jokum. Um, I had it written down. Um, and so I have it somewhere. It is Edward Joaquin. Am I mispronouncing that or Jokin? Jokin? I, I know someone that last name. Joaquin. Joaquin. Um, so what he is was it? J O A Q U I N. Oh, Joaquin. Okay. <laughs> My, I will Joaquin? names. So, yeah. um, Me too. Sure. So uh, he was. No, um, I said it in Portuguese. So <laughs> he was a Fall River detective, uh, police detective, and a veteran. Um, so there's another bridge that was removed that was named after him. But anyway, so the city has allocated a space underneath the underneath the new overpass that's being built as part of the 79 uh, project so um, and it's right by the Cove restaurant and but it's going to be underneath the over like a little or it will be a pedestrian plaza but it'll be underneath this highway structure which I don't in my personal opinion I don't think that's appropriate um, yeah. that's not Lack of insight or thought yeah, it's put into under, it. Right, yeah. it's underneath the yeah. highway overpass. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't sound glamorous. No. Um, <laughs> so, it, for somebody who has you know, put his life on the line to serve our country, I mean, we and, have several greens throughout the city oh that are, are already named in si similar uh, situations. Mm -hmm. Francis Green, the, the, the yeah, Turfy Green, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, the South End has a green that was rededicated. Um, 
I don't know, like 15 years ago, yep. I recall. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and there's, the, uh, off of East Main Street, there's the, plaza, uh, the little park, Plaza um, um, Polish History. Um, is it Kosciuszko? Kosciuszko? Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name. But it, but it is based on the Polish history that was in the South End off of East Main Street. Mm -hmm. And so there's, um, I think, you know, the Flint is an excellent idea. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sorry, we're just jumping around, but I just wanted to give some background mm -hmm. on the, what the city has planned, at least for um, honoring Mr. LePage. Okay. Um, so we do have sorry, a motion, we, a motion yeah. by Rick to table for a future meeting. I'll second the motion. Okay, second. So I have a motion by Rick and a second by Connie to table. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? If I, and if I may, Mr. Chair, real, real quickly, um, and this has nothing to do with the rededication, but with the ordinance itself, I understand um, the, you um, said you might go before the planning board again. I think it's important, especially um, with the way the um, ordinance is written, that in the future, maybe even 10 years in the future, so many times in the future, you you both only heard about the meeting very recently. You, Otherwise, you... It, for example, it could have passed, and we could have had you could have had issues with your historical district. I think it's also a good opportunity to take this this moment, maybe make a recommendation to the city council or to the planning board. My my recommendation would be that the city council should maybe adjust the ordinance that that requests like these get forwarded. I believe in uh, in the in itself, it gets forwarded to the mayor's office, to the um, city planner, the city engineer. Maybe it should include language that goes for the historical commission, especially that you have, um, it could affect the historical districts in the future with renamings of streets. If it's that important to the, to the board and to historical districts as a whole, mm -hmm. I think it's something you should talk to your board should have a discussion about. Of course, and, we, and thank you. We It's communication, unfortunately, is not uh, we're often left out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not just this. It's, it's not just this. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, so regarding Third Street, the original um, proposal for Third Street, uh, I when I mentioned it um, at the meeting, I don't think, aside from Mr. Uh, Chris Perano, who is the interim city planner, I don't believe anyone on the planning board was uh, was had realized that Third Street was at least that little portion from Bedford to Frontage um, was on the National Register. I certainly places. haven't either. I wouldn't have made right. a recommendation. It was only, it was only uh, approved and uh, um, uh, put onto the National Register uh, in February. Um, the state approved it in December, and then the um, Washington, D.C. approved it in uh, February. So um, you know, it's very new. Um, and then th I don't think any, a few members didn't realize that the buildings across the street on over here on 3rd Street house residents either. Um, and those just recently became online, at least at the ILGWU building that just opened up for um, residents, and I believe it's, you know, they moved in less than a month ago. Um, so it's still fresh, <laughs> um, but you know, we're working on trying to... That, that's why I like the idea of um, putting the greens as, again, there's no residential impact. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a part of our city that we're renaming after him. I think retributes the um, knocking down of his memorial. Mm -hmm. So I, I think those are two positives in that direction. And, and as Connie mentioned, the family can go to one of the greens, whereas mm -hmm. an overpass, what are you going to do? Drive and park yeah. in the middle of the road and say this is? I mean, you can't do it. It just hasn't. It doesn't have the recognition that a green would have. Agreed. On Veterans Day, in our wreath placed there. I mean, there's mm -hmm. ways of honoring him, you know, his memory. And the Veterans Association, which, um, they do the, uh, the uh, they put out the flags mm -hmm. uh, for Memorial right. Day, yep, and Veterans Day, so that, you know, they, that would be addressed as well mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that we should stay in touch uh, yep. so that we can, you know, work together and keep this, keep this team. And, and uh, we will be at the next planning board. And again, uh, we'll ask that a motion be made to table because this is not going to be resolved in a month. The key is, as Jason uh, just mentioned, keeping it tabled keeps it active. Mm -hmm. You're able to follow and, and maintain.
maintain it doesn't get lost or buried. And mm -hmm. the, uh, the, uh, the roadway construction on 79, that's, I think you said 2026 is the anticipated completion date, yeah. so we have, we have time. Um, yes. <laughs> I don't want this to be you know, drawn out for, I don't think you want to be, this to be drawn out for three years, but you know, it would be great to have something. I, my, I just understand my, my short time um, following the, the city in general, I, I can see how things get thrown under the rug around here. So I, I, I think it's important that things be kept on mm -hmm. to have it fall, go through. And keeping, you know, keeping these table with the various committees is, mm -hmm. is good because you can keep bringing it up. It's looked at every month. No, I, I, I agree with that. And, and uh, again, if you like the Flynn idea, uh, which I, I the, the I greens and um, and Eastern Avenue should maybe put our put our sights on that and see what can what can be done. That would happen rather quickly. So you'll, rather quickly. you'll reach out to Nancy. I'll call Nancy. Okay. The next day or two. Okay. I I can send her an email. But I'll, I'll get to her from, as a, you know, as a historic uh, commissioner. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Thank, you. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you for your good work on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for understanding. No, I appreciate it. Thank you for uh, keeping um, on this topic as well. Thank you. Have a great evening. You as well. Thank you. Thank you. Item uh, 11, um, so um, it's the creation of a study committee regarding the expansion of the 40C Highlands Local Historic District. Um, so there have, there, we have uh, inquiries from neighbors in the surrounding area mm -hmm. um, that are seeking to get listed. Um, and so that does prompt the creation of study committees. So I did reach out to Jennifer Doherty uh, with the, she's in charge of the uh, local uh, programs with the Massachusetts Historical Commission uh, regarding the process. So it, she said, Mo it depends on the city, um, but some cities require the initial request from um, the historical commission to city council, but um, in the case of Fall River, we don't need uh, a request to city council to create a study committee. If we already have a pre-existing 40C district, the, the existing historical commission acts as the study committee, um, unless there are members who don't want to serve on the study committee. Um, if there are members from our board that do not want to serve on the study committee, I do need to make the request to um, the mayor's office and city council um, to find candidates to serve on the study committee. Um, so uh, with that said, um, it's different if we're proposing a whole new district um, because we would have to get stakeholders involved, um, but if there are members that we want to add into our group, we can certainly ask. Did she talk about uh, individual homes, or does it have to be connecting? Um, so if this, so if it's individual homes, that's a new, that would be considered a new district. Okay. Um, so if it's... So we have to find a way to carve out uh, the area? So what happens next is uh, regarding, so once we create a study committee, so we should send out, um, basically figure out a map area mm -hmm. um, what houses what areas of the neighborhood so this is the highlands so anything around the district um, you know if there's houses that you think should be earmarked or at least considered um, we should send out a mailer probably mm -hmm. to a much larger area um, the mailers basically a survey to the homeowners uh, property owners um, indicating that we are looking at expanding the 40C district. Um, there's a template on the um, on the state commission's website, basically as a sample of what that survey the, looks like. The um, Preservation Society sent out a survey. Um, I know we have a copy of it too. Mm -hmm. that, um, we we. I know that they uh, did a lot of um, research with the Mass Historic Commission. And so we, I think we tailored it to the neighborhood. Right. 
and you were you on the study committee for the first go around? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, we could send it out through mail. That's a good. Uh, I mean, that's the the best option. The mm -hmm. other another option is um, uh, possibly having some sort of. I don't know if we could do like an online thing, like an online survey. Mail is best because a lot of homeowners don't necessarily live there. True. Um, very true. So, um, and we, they would have the return, uh, the return mailer or the return address at least the, mm -hmm. uh, to send back, um, and that can go to Carrie uh, mm -hmm. the Government Center. So, um, just to get feedback, and we would have their address. We would say, you know, we would find out if they want to be in the district or not. Um, there's, you know, this is, this is a multi-step process. We do have to get form B's. If the district is kept relatively small, I think we could probably do the form B's ourselves, um, or if we can, if there's any assistance we might be able to get. Um, yeah. The study report, I think we would need to. We do need a study report. So yeah. this, um, uh, uh, that's complex. Jennifer did send over the template for the study report, which goes to her anyways. Um, so I could send that around, uh, so you have an idea of what what's entailed um, for the study report. E Elaine Styles. Uh, is professor uh, at the uh, Roger Williams University, and uh, she has normally uh, ten to a dozen students in a semester mm -hmm. that uh, she uh, she can allocate mm -hmm. to do four Bs. That could so, even be like a master's student, um, like their capstone project. When I was at Roger Williams, we had to do a capstone project, and one of the options could be like a National Register nomination oh. or a Form B. Mm -hmm. And they That's have helped with Corky Row. Yes. Oh. yes. Those students that it, Roger it, it Williams. Was, it was Elaine's group who did that. Elaine who Stiles, did yeah. Corky Row. Yes. Um, Jennifer at the State Commission also mentioned that um, they will be opening up their application process for grant funding. Um, so if we do need funds to hire a consultant or somebody or anyone that can help with the Form Bs, mm -hmm. um, cause that could, I think that's the daunting project is the Form Bs. Um, yeah. uh, especially considering that the, I did look at the Highlands National Register packet there's no form B's. Um, they're the what they have for the National Register District. It's very, very. Um, My minimal. house has a form B, but yeah, it's very minimal. It's like two sentences. It's, yeah, and um, most of the houses in. Um, we had to update the form B's that were done when we were doing the 40C, mm -hmm. so that takes. Um, you know, like it did only have like one or two lines. Uh, we did have someone, a historian in the city, who helped us look up stories. We also had a lot of volunteers through the historical, uh, uh, through the Preservation Society that uh, used the historical uh, society's um, archives to get a lot of information, which a lot of us can now get online because we, you know, through historical newspapers and whatnot, and create the story for each house. Uh, and again, if it's not big, it's doable. Mm. It, um, and what, what size would that be? Kind of big. Well, <laughs> dozen homes. Currently, dozen the uh, 40C district. It was done by all volunteers. It took us. It took us a long time because um, it started when we had to take pictures with film. Like we literally <laughs> were taking pictures <laughs> with film. Because I remember. We had to send the rolls in, mm -hmm. the undeveloped wow. rolls. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it was that long ago. So um, you know, um, now it's much easier. Yeah. You can go and you can take a picture. Uh, you can digitize it pretty quick, mm -hmm. and get it rolling. So th that's why I asked before. You couldn't go down the middle of a street. You had to go through backyards, hence why ours right. is carved the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And um, so the they will allow <laughs> a boundary line down the middle of the street. We just have to justify the reasoning for that. Mm -hmm. um, so if we were hypothetically, if we were to do the Highlands, uh, I'm sorry, if we push out towards Highland Avenue, hypothetically, the hospital is a good boundary line because that is 
non-contributing. It's non-contributing <laughs> yeah. and landlocked. Yeah. The only thing that I would suggest, you know, this is me just thinking out loud, um, the granite wall around the hospital would be, you know, that's not listed as an object anywhere, um, but that is, yeah. should that's be, part of, yeah. part of the, the yeah. estate that used to be there. But, um, so with, um, and the form Bs, the, the, that, the form Bs that are on the state, the template, um, I have a current copy, so I can I can email email that to everyone, so they have an idea of what is required. It is detailed, um, uh, but um, fortunately, um, a lot. Part of, part of it, though, is pretty simple. Part of it's pa pretty simple, yeah. Part of it is like looking at the house, and you, it, does it have a granite foundation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a clapboard. Just, it's architectural description. description. Yeah. yeah. Architectural so style that, description. Yeah. that yeah. part, it's the um, the it's architecture. The research. The, yeah. The very end where um, the research. It's but the fun. research yeah, is so say. fun. It's it fun. Is. It is. I fun. love it. And it's fun but time consuming. Very time consuming. And, and you can't just do it from home. Yeah. Usually. And the building records are so, they're, they can be very inconsistent uh, here. As I found out, um, so because they don't have building, somehow they're like uh, uh, the houses that were surveyed back in the '80s. If there's a in the you know their their documents that they have to list what they've uh, researched, oftentimes they use the water department um, yes. for to figure out when water service. The Preservation does Society does, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they have their records are intact. Very very cool system that they have, mm -hmm. um, but the building department on the other hand. Like I, I've seen where it says a permit number for a year, it'll be you know number two, three, five. But if you go to the building department, they have no recollection of what that is. They don't know where to look for it. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have records from you know more than fifty years ago. So I don't know if that's something that if they were passed over to the historical society, or oh. they are just lost. Um, yeah. did, did you use the Sanborn files at all when you were? Um, no, we didn't. You didn't. We didn't. Um, Did you have a need to use those? No. Okay. No. Um, we used um, a lot of like newspaper articles. The water department, we have, uh, the Preservation Society has a plaque program, you know, the plaques you mm -hmm. see on the homes. And so we actually, every time someone requests a plaque, we research the home. And we go through the water department. We go through historical newspapers to f to find the year. Uh, we also go through the uh, deeds office, mm -hmm. registry of deeds. And that's entirely online now, too. Most of it Most until of you get it, really, really far, far back. back. And you then can look at it. It, you, can, you can. You, you go to, to unregister. Different. Yes, I know. But trust me, I know how to do it. Uh, except um, there are some that you have to go. No, you have to go down to the deeds office, mm -hmm. and there's these huge books, and you mm -hmm. have to research those books because you get to the point, even on those that are con called undocumented. What are they called? Um, Unreg unregistered? Something like that. Unregistered books? Or, yeah, so yeah. it's like before 1960. Mm -hmm. the, anything before 1960, you have to switch the, your, your search to the books. and um, But then when you look, the other ones, like it's all like handwritten, obviously, and uh, you can really get far back to when the house was built, okay. so that you can get an, a year. Because if you go into the city's, um, what is that, Rich, that page called Patriot Properties? Everything was built in 1900. <laughs> Everything is like 1900. Yeah. So. Um, no, I used to have to do that at Powell. Yeah, and it's cool because you find stories. You find stories of weddings that took place, mm -hmm. or funerals, uh, fires, and. Look at the um, the house on Hanover that the hospital wanted to take down. Mm -hmm. um, just through looking at the digitized newspapers, mm -hmm. realizing that the builder of that house um, was, you know, he owned. He and his brother owned a small company, uh, small brothers uh, rope taping company on Prospect. But Reuben Small was park commissioner, got uh, North Park um, landscaped through Olmsted, um, and then we have a Fall River block in the Pilgrim Monument because of his contribution. He was originally from Provincetown. Um, so, and that's, these are, that's information, thank, thank goodness, that all the resources yeah. are being digitized now. Yeah. Um, but, um, and the newspapers back then, were, they're great. Details. They, they're so, I mean, 
really some detail that you say, wow. <laughs> and, and what I'm finding too, the architect, I, I, and I always push the architect because I love to build a portfolio of, you can connect the dots and you can see similarities between, mm -hmm. them, between them. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I find a lot of that information in the newspapers because if the building records don't exist, it's usually listed somewhere in the newspaper. It'll yep. say like so-and-so from you know, Boston designed this house and you can't find that. And you can also look at census records. Mm -hmm. Census records really help to tell you who lived where. Um, and the libraries don't, and the public libraries don't a wonderful job at digitize, they're, I believe they're up to 1930. Now with their um, newspapers that have been digitized, it's mm -hmm. all free online on their website. I know it's, it's amazing. So good. Um, and a lot of these houses, at least in the Highlands, I don't think they're. You know, we don't. Some of them are older than the rest. Um, there might be some that might be as old as I'd say like 1850, mm -hmm. but I don't think we would have anything older than that. Um, the bulk of except for that one house, except, except for that one little house. Um, <laughs> but the bulk of the Highlands, I believe, for the most part, it's 1870 through 1920 or so, give or take. Mm -hmm. Probably like a yeah. few stragglers, but so. um, and even the newer ones, when the National Register District was written up in the 80s, even the newer houses, they're over 50 now. Um, yeah. I'm thinking of some on I think Prospect Street. Um, mm -hmm. They're infill, but they were they're over 50. Um, so they do qualify as a historic house. Um, yeah. So, um, but yeah, so we had some requests, um, you know, from Belmont Street, French, French Street, uh, Underwood. So we're looking at a sizable area. Um, but so first things first, um, you know, if we were to approve the creation of the study committee, I do have to let, I want to ask Allison Bouchard, the clerk, figure out what that process is because I think we would have to we would have to hold a regular meeting um, as a study committee um, which we can easily do at the end of the historical commission meeting kind of like how we did the historic district before uh, we did the historical commission then historic historic district before we merged um, so it sh that might just be something that she just has to do internally is to create on the city's papers a study committee um, and then with the, with the members, and then um, the mailer, we need to get the survey done, which you know, we can approve the language on that pretty easily. Um, I also recommend, we, we did this as well, we had, uh, back then it was Chris, I can't think of his name, um, at the Historic Commission come down and actually it was like a, a, um, um, an informational for homeowners to attend. Mm -hmm. So where they could have their questions, you know, exactly. uh, answered. Once we have an idea of a neighbor of the area, um, mm -hmm. we should create a map, um, and I can ask Chris for if there's a way of get, getting a copy of like a, a GIS map of the neighborhood. I know they're available online, but if I can get them printed on a sizable thing, we can figure out like target some houses mm -hmm. or at least a neighborhood mm -hmm. area, um, and it's better to start. A little on the bigger side and if we need to shrink it down we can shrink it down yeah. um, which I think is always the case when you create a historic district you always start big and you have to kind of whittle it down um, and this is the expansion of the district not the creation of a new one so um, in terms of like the significance when it comes to the study report um, you know we can kind of piggyback off of the we can piggyback off of the, the initial um, study uh, the initial creation of the 40c um, and then, yeah, so we will have to have public meetings with the homeowners. Um, that is part of the process. Um, and then ultimately, once we have the paperwork and the blessing from the MHC, then it's a matter of presenting it to city council, which they, I believe we need a two thirds council vote. We don't need, um, and we don't need every homeowner, we don't need every homeowner in the, in the proposed district to agree. We should, but it's not a requirement. Um, from that's what Jennifer said. Um, we do just need a two-third city council vote to enact the district. Mm -hmm. um, and part of this also would help, I think, push the need to um, you know, the planning to, or even zoning, for that matter, to consider um, recognizing the 40C as an overlay district. I think that often gets um, when you pull up a ta uh, property on the assessor's website or in their database here, it is not flagged um, that it is in the 40C at all. 
but if you create an overlay zone, then automatically it comes up as you know their their zone. But then um, you know it has the overlay zone attached to it, and I think that would help push then at least homeowners when they or when somebody's buying a house in the neighborhood, and the realtor is doing their due diligence and they said, oh, it's zoned, you know, S for single family houses, but there's an overlay zone, and it, you're in the whole historic district, so that's something. You know, if we create a larger district, that might force the the creation of an overlay zone. So, anyways. So, do we think we have bandwidth to do this? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, Joyce, any co uh, questions on this at all? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, are we still in open discussion? No, we're not. We're, we're not still on item 11. So, all right. So, this is in regarding, um, so, I think we just need a uh, a motion to create a study committee? I'll make a motion to create a study committee. All right. And I'll second that okay, motion. Okay, here we go, everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, I have a motion by Elizabeth <clears throat> and a second by Rick to create a study committee regarding the expansion of the 40 C Highlands Local Historic District. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right. Oh, next, next big project. Here we go. Here we go. The ball is rolling. <laughs> and next year will be 10 years since the creation of the 40C. Wow. <laughs> so that would be fun. Um, great. Mm. So 10 years. So that's, this is exciting. Um, we have no, uh, no old business. Um, anything regarding open discussion at all? Yeah, I just have a note. Oh. Yes. of appreciation to the chairman who sent us an email recently on the um, MHC online training, oh, which great. I will yeah, gladly make myself available mm -hmm. for because I felt early on that we, we needed some basics mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to it. So I want to thank the chairman for bringing okay. that to our attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And, and, I'll, and I'll second that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The, the training yes. sessions are very, very wonderful, yeah. and very informative. Um, you know, we had that one on um, uh, creating a local historic district. Yeah, and that's, that was yeah. really yeah. helpful. So I'm curious. I want to do there. Uh, there's a few on there that I'm interested in doing. Um, yep. so, yeah. yeah, they're all Thank during the too. day, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I do appreciate that. Um, so with that said, um, anything else? Um, so we have a number of items that are tabled. Um, so we, uh, regarding the items from Ryan LLC, um, they're, we're working on that tour of the building. So she did say that we can do all four. Um, I have to figure out how, um, what the day and the time, I think she said it's gonna be on a Monday. Okay. Um, but That's good. Um, you know, there's, we have, I just had to ask Allison regarding because um, we will be a quorum. Um, yeah, I didn't respond because I'm I'm flexible, yep. so that's why I didn't, I didn't want to restrict. Yeah. I do believe that we are able to meet. I have to just double check with Allison. I yeah. believe we are able. I think to it's meet. as long as we don't discuss we do board discuss business. Exactly, um, but these are okay. items that we have reviewed, so we should be able to see and get updates from. Okay. Um, so yeah, I believe we should be able to meet. We just can't discuss anything. Um, so, and you know, I'll, have to, I'll send a disclosure form to Allison as well. Um, so yeah, we have that, and um, if we can probably get a virtual meeting before their deadline, which mm -hmm. is coming up. Um, so, but everything else, um, like Third Street, Mr. Dias, um, uh, what else do we table? Oh, 229 Highland Avenue. Um, I only just recently got his contact information, um, so he, there's not enough time to get him over here. Um, I think that was it. So we'll have, we'll have a meeting coming up, a couple meetings coming up. Okay. Um, so it is 7.29. Late. Um, it is late. <laughs> um, so um, it is 7.29. May, may I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second that motion. All right. All right. I have a motion by Connie 
and a second by Rick to adjourn the meeting at 7:29 p.m. Our next meeting will right, be got a bunch. our next meeting will be uh, scheduled hearing um, unless otherwise will be Tuesday, September 19th, 2023. Uh, make it a uh, all in favor of adjourning. Aye. 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 All <laughs> okay. Excellent. Thank you.